syncing these can be a lot of fun. Just a moment. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Correct Views live on the Media Speaks Sam I B. DeGangi reporting, and we are going to jump straight into the news. We now have uh, coming up right here the Rand Paul update. How many of you have noticed that you don't really know exactly what to make of Rand Paul? On one hand, he says that all libertarians, he says, I am not a libertarian, I am a constitutional conservative. Okay, now there is a difference. Michael Savage is a constitutional conservative. I have a lot of respect for him, but I would not necessarily vote for him over a libertarian. What's he doing here? They're, they're, I mean, this is the same man who filibustered for hours and hours on ends for us as American citizens, but then at the same time allowed drone uses for, you know, like a, a, a liquor store robbery. Uh, is he blind to the fact that, that statistically there's a real good chance we'll just blow up the entire liquor store? Um, I don't know. I question things. There's the good and the bad. Here is the good. Rand Paul. Um, we're going to go with good first because that's the order I loaded the shows into the surf. Rand Paul pushes for legalization of industrialized hemp in new farm bill natural news. As the nation's lawmakers continue to bore through the details of the upcoming federal farm bill revision, a number of forward thinking members of Congress are simultaneously pushing for the antiquated and indefensible prohibition on hemp farming. Um, it says here something, I did not know this either. Um, where would the, um, it's, it, well, I knew that it was in the same class as heroin and LSD. Marijuana is in the same group as that, so that's ridiculous to begin with. But it says here, industrial hemp has vast potential to substantially replace, it says, many industrial applications that rely on oil, genetically modified crops, can't get rid of those, and various other unsustainable and heavy polluting source materials. Hemp is arguably the most versatile crop known to man in more than 25,000 known uses, including its amazing ability to be transformed into consumer goods like durable rope, paper, clothing, reinforcement material for concrete and automobiles, and even fuel. The best part is that hemp requires very little water, it says, and uh, tends to clean up after natural disasters and um, various, uh, it, it, it pulls a lot of toxins out of the earth when it grows. The biggest problem here is that they always want to say that hemp is a gateway to the legalization of marijuana, and that is not true at all. It is absolutely impossible, it said, to get high from smoking or eating hemp. That is a matter of fact. Now for the bad Rand Paul. This is from ResistTheTyranny.com. If you don't know who Matt Winklejohn is, type in Resist the Tyranny and go check out Matt Winklejohn. I saw this, I loved the article, and I liked it even more when I looked at the, uh, the name and found it was him. Has Ron Paul lost support of libertarians? And I'm going to give you my take on this in just a second. With his father, Ron Paul, getting shafted at the RNC in the last election, libertarians are hoping to be able to back Rand Paul in a 2016 presidential run. And I was one of those people, and now I'm on the fence. Starting back in 2012 election, much to the dismay of millions and turning his back on his father, Rand Paul backed Mitt Romney as the 2012 presidential candidate. Look up Bilderberg, why it mattered to me, because that is going on this week. Uh, and uh, clearly I haven't done a report on it because I'm sure you guys are being inundated with it. Um, the media speaks is on it, on it, on it. I made a movie about it last year. I went to it. Go look up Bilderberg, why it mattered to me. I'm broadcasting at 4.36 in the morning at 6.4.2013, so right now all the live Bilderberg action is probably dormant. Some say it was a to get a foothold into the Republican Party, the betrayal of Ron, his father. 
Some say it was because Rand's beliefs did not match his father's. Whatever the reason was, it put many libertarians and anti-establishment Republicans by surprise. Yes, the point of my last story being it was uh, it took the wind out of our sails. We had so much positive um, reinforcement from how solid everybody was there and the passion that people were uh, speaking and uh, demonstrating with. To come home to that the same week was awful. Moving ahead to 2013, Rand Paul makes a heroic 13-hour filibuster blocking the nomination of John Brennan into the CIA. Rand spoke passionately, as I mentioned, for 13 hours against Barack Obama's use of drone surveillance and drone strikes inside the U.S. borders and against U.S. citizens. This filibuster seemed to spark a renewal of trust with libertarians. Unfortunately, the trust once again vanished when Rand Paul spoke out in support of drone use against suspects in the Boston Marathon bombing. That's another one. A couple more paragraphs, and I'm going to read them. Short article, but well worth the coverage. Rand Paul then made a statement that I do not think any libertarian will ever forget, and I am one of them. I am not advocating everyone go out and run around with no clothes on and smoke pot. He said, I'm not a libertarian. I'm a libertarian Republican. I'm a constitutional conservative. You, my friend, have lost the interest of possibly 1% of the voting population right there. Libertarians uh, carried Gary Johnson up to over 1% this year. And again, there are still great mysteries that have never been um, explained to me. Like how in seven hells, Gary Johnson was polling over 10% in Ohio a week before the elections and ended up with only 1% of the vote. Does anyone else find that odd? Fast forward to this week, uh, Rand Paul made a fundraising trip through Silicon Valley visiting uh, CIA, NSA spying giants, Google and Facebook. This kind of action makes libertarians wonder if they want to support Rand Paul if he is getting money from such companies with such a large history of privacy complaints against them. Is Rand Paul playing politics in order to infiltrate the establishment Republican Party? Can libertarians trust him in 2016? Only time can tell. My opinion, you're going to get it right after this article, the last of the Rand Paul updates, conservative magazine counsels Rand Paul to join the CFR. This is such a bad idea, but they word it well. I'm going to let him say it. The New American, Joe Wolfleton, the second duty. Senator Rand Paul is currently on the nationwide I'm probably running for president tour. He's made the, the, pre the requisite stops in early election states in Iowa and New Hampshire, according to the GOP faithful, in bringing the figurative freezers full of red meat to throw their way. Demonstrating impressive vocal savvy, he is also making a habit of making bold statements that set him apart from the potential establishment competitors on both sides. He may be making rounds and shaking the right hands and firing the right targets, but if he's serious about being elected this year, Senator Rand Paul should join the Council on Foreign Relations. If you don't know what that is, just don't log off. Give me a minute. It's very important. At least that is the incredibly bad advice offered by Jacob Heilbrun, H-E-I-L-B-R-U-N-N, to the freshman senator and skin of the libertarian-leaning Paul family. This is hurts to even read. In an article published on May 19th, The National Interest, a foreign policy journal, senior editor Hilburn suggests not only that Paul put much distance between himself and those who consider the CFR and its global policies to be a threat to the U.S. liberty and sovereignty, basically separate himself from the people that are telling the truth, but for good measure, he should add the CFR President Richard N. Haas as a consigliere. He wants Rand Paul to appeal to Republicans and make the libertarians look foolish. Well, not even libertarians, people that know what the CFR is, and I'm going to get to it, to make them look stupid, and this will bring more people in. Haven't they learned anything from Romney? And again, it's questionable as to whether or not Romney lost this fair and square. I covered that at nauseum. However, with what we have to go on, you know what? Maybe if they'd have elected Ron Paul as the candidate, it wouldn't have even been close. Maybe that is what the polls were showing, and they just wouldn't let it happen. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and get into a little bit of what it is that they do here. Um, it says, they are indeed a secretive organization, the agent of nefarious bankers intent on promoting world government. In truth, for decades since its creation, Hilbram claims a network of realist thinkers with government experience. Perhaps the best evidence of the influence of this organization was revealed during a speech delivered by CFR headquarters in New York City in 2009 by then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, Shrillery. In her remarks, Shrillery offered an accurate and chilling assessment of the relationship between the CFR and the American foreign policymakers. Quote, we get a lot of advice from the Council, so this will mean that I won't have to go as far to be told what we should be doing and how we should think about the future. In other words, the Council on Foreign Relations was telling our Secretary of State what to do. In this instance, they couldn't have possibly done worse than she has. That is not the point. Um, the CFR is behind every awful thing that happens to the country. They get us entangled in the worst possible wars. They get us involved in things that we have no business whatsoever being in at all. And the more this carries on, the more... I don't know. I think, I think the worse the country gets as a whole. I'm checking. Do I have a listener and logging on? Or is that... Uh, I do believe that, that is the technician on a mission. So uh, if you are somebody and I'm missing you, I'm very, very sorry. Again, the correct view is being done live. If you want to check in uh, Google Hangouts, click on it. Please do so. Anyway, the Council on Foreign Relations has been an absolute nightmare for this country. And they want Rand Paul to join it. That is going to put a knife in the back again, right after all the debacle that I just got to. So this is needless to say... My advice, what do I say? Justin Amish over Rand Paul. I don't know. I don't, I don't think Justin Amish is a CFR member. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. No. Um, how about him? How about Justin Amish over Rand Paul? What if we made Rand Paul at least wait four years because of his many capitulations? How about Judge Napolitano? I would vote. I would vote for him in a second. It'd be very hard for anybody to be uh, in a position where I would vote against Judge Napolitano based on what I know of him now. So that's what I think we should do. Um, I think we should maybe let Rand Paul know what it feels like to, to maybe lose some of us. Guys, Nitro half hyphen pack N I T R O hyphen P A K. Check this site out. One eight hundred eight six six four eight seven six. This site has everything, and they have everything at an amazing price. I'm going to go over some of their top featured products here just really quick. Tactical Frontier Water Filter, $11.95. Um, that's almost uh, a steal compared to what other places have it as. Everyone loves the Light Straw. They have it for $19.95. Uh, the other day, if you watched the live hangout that the media speaks did, we talked about a number of different places. And uh, this was the cheapest life straw. Simply was. AMK Quick Clot Sport, 25 grams, eleven ninety five. Go there and check it out, guys. If you're a prepper, you have to go there. If you're not a prepper, if you're just somebody going on a camping trip or want to spend some time this year in the outdoors, maybe you're somebody that wants to filter your water so that you can quit drinking fluoride. And I'm dying of thirst, so hold on. Well, then go ahead go to Nitro Hyphen Pack and have a look. You're going to like what you see. Guys, the last two things I want to get to here. I wasn't going to get to this at first, but I decided that it would be important to do so, and you're about to see why. Japan halts imports of U.S. wheat after USDA shock finding on genetic pollution from GMOs. And I said, this is good news, so I'm going to go ahead and read it a bit. It's from Natural News. A lot of stories from Natural News today. It has already begun. Japan has just canceled a large contract to purchase U.S. wheat. We will refrain from buying Western white and feet white effective today. Toru Hisadome, a Japanese farm ministry official in charge of wheat trading, told Reuters. As many readers will know, I predicted precisely this scenario, writes Mike Adams, just yesterday, May 31st is when it was penned, in Natural News article warning about the consequences of genetic pollution. There I wrote, 
all we produced in the United States will now be heavily scrutinized and possibly even rejected by other nations that traditionally import U.S. wheat. This obviously has enormous economic implications for U.S. farmers and agriculture. Basically, the only people that are now wanting GMOs are America. And it mentions that in here. And it's going to end up hurting farmers that have this on their land. It's going to be a real SOB to get rid of. You just mark my words on that. Even if they want to. And it's something now that's becoming a detriment to us in this country. Not, not only is it bad for you, but it's literally becoming a detriment now. And I wasn't going to cover the story until I also came across this. Uh, let me find it here. Because I accidentally closed it down a second ago. Also, North Korea has now banned the import of genetically modified food. This means that it becomes a whole lot more important now because we're starting to lose the entire Orient to it. If you're going to have major nations dropping out of the GMO uh, death trap all at one time, I'm sorry, not North Korea. So that's what I get for quoting when I shut the article down. South Korea, why would North Korea? North Korea would feed people death if it was an option. Uh, also natural news, South Korea joins Japanese ban on U.S. wheat imports after shocking GMO contamination announcement by USDA. This is June 3rd. News about the GMO contamination of U.S. wheat crops seems to be spreading faster than the GMOs themselves. On Friday, South Korea joined Japan in announcing a halt on imports of U.S. wheat due to the USDA's recent announcement that commercial wheat grown in the U.S. is contaminated with Monsanto's genetically engineered wheat. If you're one of the listeners that do not know what Monsanto is, go ahead and look up what Monsanto is because you're not going to like it. Look up Monsanto rats. That is what's in most of the wheat and the corn and the food that you and I eat. And that means me too, yes. Chowing on it every day. And if you want to know what it can do, I'll tell you one of the things I'm pretty sure it did. It managed to kill my dad. He lived on a diabetic diet, which, you know, you can only eat so much. He was on a diabetic diet for over a decade, I believe. Um, didn't, didn't drink at all, ever. Uh, I think I'd seen him drink maybe, I don't know twice in the last eight or nine years prior to his death. He died of gallbladder liver cancer. How does that happen with somebody that doesn't have a diet that leads to that kind of disease? It happens from things like Monsanto. And now that South Korea is barring them, you got more and more and more people coming out of the woodwork proving that this food is toxic. But American interests are tied into it so they keep feeding it to us. Um, the final thing that I want to get to, and I thought this is why I originally thought it was humorous, uh, not haha -ha funny, but a, a kind of gallows humor. Japan is barring GMOs, and yet the food that is in Japan is far more dangerous than the GMOs. If anybody should be happy for GMO food, it would be Japan! Um, I'm glad that they're hurting the monster of Monsanto. Of course I am. My point is that anything coming out of Japan is dreadful. Anything at all. And if you, if you eat anything from there, you're, it's a death wish. Uh, particularly anything on the eastern uh, area of Japan. Anything that comes out of their ocean. And depending on where they're from, car parts. Because radioactivity lasts a life. It causes cancer your whole life. The entire time you are around it, once it is brought in, even if the thing that gave you the radiation is gone, you will have that radiation in you forever. And with that in mind, this is common dreams. Radioactive cesium recorded at 10 spots in Pacific Ocean after Fukushima. Radioactive cesium from Fukushima plant was found 10 points on the Pacific Ocean, including a location as far as 1,300 miles from the plant. Less than a year after Fukushima nuclear disaster began, the scientists revealed on Tuesday. The Japanese Times and Kyoto News reported that the findings were announced by researchers with the Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science and Technology at the Japanese Geoscience Union meeting. 
and each of the ten points, located between Japan's Hokkaido Island and Guam, cesium-134 and cesium-137, which are major heart destroyers and cancer causers, were detected in the plankton and seawater samples taken by scientists between January and February of 2012, the news agencies reported. And this matters, I'm going to tell you exactly why it matters. If it is in plankton, it's in plankton, then it's possible to test the waters and say that the waters are safe to fish in because there's not a high level of radioactivity in the water. But it's in the plankton. The fish eat the plankton. Bigger fish eat those fish. Bigger fish. We eat the fish after it's gotten radioactivity and radioactive elements from plankton and from maybe two, three, four other fish. Then we eat them. How many times did they eat the plankton before they were eaten the first time? So by the time we get a fish sandwich, we have no idea how much is in it. And the Obama administration has done nothing to test it. He's done nothing to keep us safe. And for those of you that wish Romney would have won, guess what? He didn't. I didn't hear him clamoring for testing either. The researchers found the highest density of cesium in seawater around latitude 36 and 40 degrees north. Good place to avoid anything from, don't you think? While plankton with the highest concentration of cesium were found 25 degrees north and 150 degrees east. What you need to do is find out if things you ordered from Japan have come from, been through, not even through, you don't want it, through that area, from that area, or made in that area. You don't want it. I'm going to finish this. Plankton are thought to, to play a key with thought. And the moon is thought to be something that comes out at night only. It is. Plankton is key in the dispersion of cesium because they are eaten by bigger fish. We want to study further what is influencing the accumulation of radioactive cesium. We know the nuclear power plant is dumping radioactivity into the water. We don't need to study it. The Japan Times reports Minoru Kitamura, Minoru, a marine ecologist and senior idiot researcher at the Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science and Technology cover-up office. The high levels of cesium found in the plankton around at 25 degrees north presented a concern. Kutimura added, saying, we don't know why the level got so high around that area. It happens due to Fukushima not being able to be a disaster that anyone has any idea how to stop and is at least 100 times worse than what you've been reported on the mainstream media. And if you think I'm making it up, go look at the work of Chris Busby. Uh, Lauren Moray, Helen Caldicott, Miss Milky the Clown, Red Button Studios, Kevin Blanche. I'm not, I'm not the only one out here. These people are, I mentioned are all far smarter than I am. And there you go, one after the other, all saying that this is absolute death. Uh, you are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. Please do me a favor. Donate to the show if you can, because every penny that you give me goes to a better show. You've got my word on that. And friends... Check out the Media Speaks. Go there. Check out the work of Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself. Till next time, Correct Views and, oh, I've, I remember what I was going to say, Bilderberg. Um, go check out Infowars.com. They've got uh, constant live coverage of Bilderberg and up to the minute reporting, of course, can be found on the Media Speaks. Thanks for listening. Good night and God bless.